All right, what episode is this? Is this 31? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go look. <laughs> uh, I think it's 31. That sounds right. Dad, come in. I just accidentally opened. No, stop. I accidentally opened Logitech Capture. Maybe we just use this as the intro. <laughs> what, me blowing my nose? <laughs> and me trying to find the episode. I mean, that's always in the intro. But anyways, <laughs> welcome everyone to episode 31 <laughs> of the Waves on the Shore podcast with myself and Jaren. And for the first time ever, a live audience. Yes, Jaren doesn't even know this. Let me get my mic out of the way. I heard you inviting Archie, I bet. Is it Archie? That's Archie. Hold on, 100%. I need to get a light on him. Yeah, I heard you yes, invite sir. him into the room. <laughs> he's just, uh, he's just, he's just live, curled up. The live audience. Oh, yeah. Um, he he move. I don't know. Like, that's not that. That's on? not true. Actually, that's not true. Oh, it's not We've the had, first a time we've had a live audience. Back in college, well, we had. Well, we have times. multiple times we've <laughs> we've had we've had herds of people interruptions. We've had yeah. I think Will Will sat in on a couple episodes. My roommate Robbie was often in the room while we were recording, but he doesn't care about country music, so he yeah. was not. He was just chilling. L Robbie. Will purposefully sat in the room a couple times <laughs> to to be there while I recorded. So yeah, but we it's have the first had a time we've audience. had a canine audience. Welcome our, uh, our first Canadian guest. Uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I'm, I'm excited, actually. We have a few albums to bring, and I am just generally excited to talk about both of these. Um, I've already yeah. talked about one on the channel, and then we've got your standard What Are We Listening To and Who The Frick. Um, I don't really think there's a whole lot else to mention, so I think we can just dive right in. we got two albums. Uh, which would you like to go with first? I'll let you choose. Um, uh, let's do Co. We'll do All the, right. we'll do Hell Paso first. So, obviously, um, meant as all of you know, what, two weeks ago now? A week ago? September 16th. Just over a week ago, uh, Co. Wetzel dropped his album, Hell Paso. My review is up on the channel now. I really enjoyed it. Uh, which was surprising because going into a Co Wetzel album, I was not expecting to like particularly love it. But yeah. you are obviously a bigger rock fan, so I'm genuinely this interested. Not only what you think of this album, but <clears throat> what you think in like compared to the rest of his discography. Because I feel like you would be a bigger fan. Or wait, no, because you okay. Never, so you yeah, listen to a Co Wetzel album. Before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, say he's I... someone that you think you'd like, but you've never. Okay, right. I just remembered yeah. that on the fly. Okay, so th yeah. talk to us. Talk I was about to, to touch on that. Yeah, so I, like Evan just said, I have never, I think I've heard, I'm sure I've heard clips of like parts of songs that he's had before, but I've never sat down and listened to a song or an album by him until Hell Paso came out. And I saw that it came out and I was like, well, we're just going to listen to it. So I threw it on while I was playing, uh, I was playing something on Xbox and I was like, what were you playing? Oh, um, uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, I don't remember, and I'm not gonna think about something. it. So, I'm hiding something. What do you think? Okay, what do you think I'm hiding? I was what's not a, playing what's Fortnite. A, what's a really like weird game to play? Thinking Monopoly. Like, thinking like 2K. Maybe. Playing Monopoly alone. <laughs> On my Xbox yes, while I'm listening while I'm listening to Hell Paso. Oh, <laughs> what a state he's found himself. The thing is, I I have played Monopoly alone on my Xbox. I, I was not Monopoly doing on that. Xbox, though. not alone though. It's always been with a group. Okay. All right, continue. Um. Anyway, uh, I thought the album was just really good, and you, I, I was just like, I when it ended, I was like, all right, I want to listen to it again. Like it's, it, it was solid rock music where with definitely some obvious there's some country isms in there but it obviously everybody says it everybody knows it at this point co basic co wetzel is basically just a rock artist but he's got this kind of country aesthetic country uh, yeah yeah that's a good way to put it and uh i don't know i really enjoyed it creeps 
is probably just my favorite one to kind of jam out to. Mm-hmm. I enjoy, uh, was it, is it Kid from Yellow Bush Road? Is that uh, just Yellow Bush Road. Just Yellow Bush Road? Um, I enjoy Yellow Bush Road. I'm bad at remembering titles sometimes. Uh, K- and Cabo is definitely good, although I can be pretty bad sometimes at really, like sometimes I lyrics will really like, hit me or i'll like catch on to them sometimes i'll hear a song and the lyrics are like like they just go over my head like i just don't and like cabo or cabo was one of them it's actually cabo i think someone corrected me in the comments i think it is cabo but whatever who knows you guys know what i'm talking about um but once i kind of like listen i like uh, after many many listens of that one i was like Hang on a second. I've been listening to this album like out loud in my family room while I've been playing Xbox, and like this is like very inappropriate. <laughs> this is like, I was suddenly like, "Wow, uh, <laughs> I'm Sorry, not gonna mom. do that again." <laughs> well, my mom doesn't. She's oblivious sometimes. But it's like I don't know. My mom is just that way. Like I could like I could be watching something. And someone could just like scream the f word like on this like on like a show or a movie or something like that, and I'll be like, oh shoot, and my mom will just like not hear it. But then like when somebody says like the most like mundane word, like oh, not yeah. very bad, she'll be like, so just do like the hand. Yeah, she'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she'll do, it. and I'm I'm like really really, <laughs> but yeah, it's solid. Like I don't even. I like the intro things. I know. Oh, I know dude, some people are just a little. There's no way I'm getting. Or transitions. That's a better Ads word. on my screen recording. Like, why don't they go on the other screen? <laughs> <sighs> You're gonna want to probably cut that last like, seconds. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah, the uh, the transitions are pretty. I think cool, interesting, unique. I like them. I do really like them. Um. I think to be continued is interesting because it's kind of a song, but it just kind of ends, right? He, he like oh, starts to be like, continued. yeah. I didn't really read into it that much until uh, I watched Grady's video on it afterwards, and then, mm-hmm. um, which is a day or two after my video went up. But I was just, I was just interested to see what he thought. And yeah, I, I never really gave the closer any thought until he started talking. And then I listened back to it. I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe Grady's point has legs. Maybe there's something yeah. to this. Yeah. I think it's really... I do really like um, Ko's very... He seems to... If, I, I haven't really heard any of his other music, but just from what people have told me, he's never been this introspective, I guess. No, by or, far not. And... <clears throat> I do think that K because of that Cabo or Cabo or whatever is super is fairly interesting to me out of all of the songs on this album. I like the uh <clears throat> he's almost I don't know, like he it's interesting to me that he feels there's so much conflict within himself, it seems like, and mm-hmm. he knows that he could, he can be better that it's within him. But and maybe he feels like he's maybe he is moving towards that. Maybe Co ten years ago was like ten times worse than Co now. I have no idea. I'm just it, it, just to fi- find a man at this kind of place where the events that ha- take place in Cabo with like the like I think there's like strippers and like alcohol and like blood and just like all the all this very just violent graphic vulgar stuff happening but he's also kind of like i'm kind of a disappointment <laughs> i think well i think that's the difference between um how paso and older co stuff is i think if for example we took cabo um i think if that was on a previous co record it would have been much more like embracing it like look at me with all this money and i get to have these people and these things around me like blah yeah. blah, blah and look at me i i get to trash myself whenever i want Whereas I think the difference between El Paso is it's, it's that same co-lifestyle that he's been, like, not campaigning, but he's been, like, um, boasting about. He's just, even though he, his just he, was, he seemed been, like he was proud of it. Yeah, even though his yeah. music's always been, like, sad boy stuff, 
he sort of like embraced this uh, lifestyle, whereas I think how past was the first time where Co truly reflects on what he like the same stuff he's been singing about for years now, but in a different light where he's like, I actually don't like this. I actually don't feel good about this. And I think yeah. that's made it so interesting to me. Huh. I think it also yeah. for me makes his previous albums a little bit more like even sellout. It, I think El Paso makes Sellout a little more enjoyable for me. And I didn't really like that album. I don't, had, did, have you only heard El Paso? Did you? I have literally only okay. heard El, pa well, El Paso. I think El Paso for me makes Sellout slightly more... Uh, I, I, when I say tolerable, that sounds like I, I hate it, blah, 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 blah. And it just is bad musically. But I think it makes the... Attitude maybe it concept. gives it more perspective yeah because knowing that it eventually the ship eventually turns around and he's not just like doubling down on this like douchey rock boy thing hmm. so yeah regardless it's very i will say it's very interesting to me how like him he seems to be friends with a lot of different people yes just in general yes like there's parker mccollum and i think that comes with them just both coming coming out of texas and then there's also like he did a, a, a decent amount of shows with Hardy. That's and, a collab that makes sense. <laughs> and that it does make sense from from a Sonic perspective sometimes, but at the same time, like, yeah, but at this like it's like okay, but Co is still very much this like like Hardy's even though he's not like the dad like short hair like nice little like plaid he's no shirt. Co. He's not he's not that anymore, but he's definitely not Co either. You know like. Hardy is still very much this guy. Who, he has a he has a fiance. He's been dating for like years and years now. He's like he's never really had a controversy. He's a he's a he's a respected songwriter. And then you have Co, who is none of those things. <laughs> and so it's very interesting to me. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be friends or anything like that. It's, I just Did wonder if playing matchmaker. I no. I'm just, I'm what I wonder if. As Co has matured, if the new friendships that he's had have maybe you helped, think he's trying to change who he surrounds himself with. Maybe I don't know, but but the thing is, Hardy seems like a pretty solid dude, is what I'm saying. Even yeah. though even though sometimes his music is like you can still make rock music and not be an asshole, you know. So <laughs> it's like like <laughs> that, that is possible, but I don't know. That's it is interesting to me. I did one. Uh, there's a, some clip I think. There's a. There was like one show that Co played where he had a heart. It's like it's a shirt Hardy that sucks. said "Hardy sucks" yeah, and it's in the yeah, Hardy yeah, font. Yeah. And I, I, for, I thought I was like, okay, that's that's pretty funny. Wasn't that a show <laughs> with Hardy, or he was like opening for Hardy? Or something? I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was. I doubt that. I on a, <laughs> He's just unironically like it, wearing a Hardy sucks shirt to his. Show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. But yeah, it's a solid album. Like I enjoy it. Creeps is definitely the one that it's just like it's mm -hmm. a freaking jam yeah yellow bush road too there's some uh, oh and i don't know just i think that's it's just a sauce it's all solid i'm just kind of I'm repeating had, myself right here yeah i think that's one thing i found with this album is it's not like it's an album with like really good moments but blah, blah 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 i think it really is like a pretty front to back like this is just a good album and depending what you think of like the songwriting or the yeah idea. some of the however, material however deep you want to read people. into it i think on a more surface level it's just a really good album if you had to give a rating where are you ballparking this i gave mine just below an eight and a half which i would say so this is this is definitely a rock album to me so i'm going to compare it to other rock-esque things and so that means I'm going to compare it to Kaleo. I was just going to say, is this Kaleo or something? <laughs> uh, and Kaleo is still like, that's like 9.8. That's like, we're getting like, we're pushing like 10 material with Kaleo. Anything that they touch. And this is still like, this is solid. But I, I still feel like there's some songs that I might not really like. They're not bad. Um, I just might not like come back to them. Whereas with Kaleo, mm. it's like any song, I don't care. Put it on. I will listen to it. Oh, it's all in Icelandic. Don't mind me. I will listen to it. I don't <laughs> care if I don't understand the words, but I don't know. I I'd probably go like, a. 
I'll say like an eight. I think it's okay, an eight. That's pretty good. I think I, like, I, th- I think it is a solid rock album. I think we're winding down on like. It's crazy to think, but 2022, we're in the last quarter of the year, which is absolutely well, nuts. We're we like, yeah, we're finishing the ninth month of 12. There's three months left. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was, <laughs> um, I was trying to, it's still, it's <laughs> I was trying to do October, November. <laughs> I was, I was trying to. It's crazy yeah, to think that we're getting that down in the year, like that we really are starting to wind it down. But as I'm looking back and, and thinking back, um, I mean, I, as far as your rewind goes, I'm sure Hell Paso will appear in my album category. But I, it's it's one of those albums that I think it's going to be tough for me to place because I think subjectively, I really like it. Like, personally, I really like it. Ob- like, objectively, critically... I might like it more. So it becomes, well, where do I rank it against albums that I really like subjectively? Hmm. Yeah. Um, Because I think back and I I gave, like, I'm just opening up my mind a little, not that this matters much, but I I was thinking the other day, like, if I had to compare it to albums that I gave really high reviews, so I'm thinking Brett Eldridge, I'm thinking Ernest. If I'm thinking El Paso, it's like, maybe I go back to the Ernest album more, but despite my ratings i'm wondering if I, el paso is like the better album so i do like, yeah how do I rank see that's them? the because I, I think i think either you have to to clarify and be like from a critical standpoint i think maybe like from a from if you're just looking at pure substance this album might be better mm-hmm. but if i'm in talking about enjoyment one that doesn't oh, depress me no we're not going on my bed one second <laughs> <laughs> no, Arch, no, Arch, no. archie a menace <laughs> I let my dog on my bed. I'm cooler than Evan. Evan's a freaking loser. Look at Into this chump. Chair. Big chump energy. Unless you want to leave. Are we Are we leaving? We're leaving, okay. <laughs> Arch is upset because Evan didn't let him on his bed. I wouldn't want to We're be not in entertaining there enough. Our live I feel bad for left. Yeah, I feel okay. bad for I feel bad for any of the girls that have dated Evan. So <laughs> what? <laughs> just smack it on that? <laughs> huh? I, I'm not even gonna. Well, you'll have I'll, to I'll watch it back when the episode goes up. <laughs> um, uh, shoot, I was no. saying something about album rings. Yeah, I, I mean, for my rankings, I'm always gonna find like a, a balance between like objective and subjective because like if there's an album that i truly love i'm probably gonna put it above an album that i think is slightly better but i just haven't loved as much because it's my list but i the the thing with the co-album is like i uh, i love it both critically and personally so i think it's gonna be a a, a beefy it's a i'm honestly it's a grower i'm honestly not sure what my list will look like at the end and we still have we well the thing is we still have some albums that have yet to come out. Like we've got Tyler Childers and Ashley Bember just name? on the same day. All Ashley three. McBride, that's her name. Um, yeah. Wait, and who? Who? who did I... I'm excited for that album. Oh that yeah, album and album. and so like there's still three more of those. I feel like there's some other. Um, I mean, not that it's still gonna be getting... in the. We're probably no, no not. Offense, get... I shouldn't say this, but with half of it already out, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say the Bailey Zimmerman album EP that's coming out in like two weeks, but it's not gonna be like a top ten. I'm trying to think of like yeah. releases coming up. Um, well, there is is there like even a Thomas Rhett thing still happening? Or so like... I've got some people have been DMing me about this, and I am not sure because he said side B at the end of 2022. We're yet to hear any word of that, which. Either there, he, I feel like he hasn't released a song in a while either, so it's like here's here's where I'm. Also, at, right? is Hardy like Hardy might he might sneak in? I think I if I'm being honest, I think uh, we're getting something similar to what Morgan did, and he's gonna drop it like right at the start of the year <laughs> to try and get the stream numbers and be like mm. the most streamed country. Because Morgan announced it at the end of the November year and dropped it like the first week, and I think that's what Hardy's gonna do. Um... But as for Thomas Rhett, the, the fact he hasn't... The, okay, this point sounds really stupid, so let me elaborate. Let me build on it. But, like, it's either very concerning 
or very exciting that he hasn't released anything because if he has if he still plans on putting out side um my hair is a mess if he still plans on putting out side b at the end of this year there's three months left so it has to come out in the next three months and there hasn't been any word of it which makes me think we're not going to get bombarded with like pre-releases and promotion he's just going to show up and say bang there's the album like what ashley mcbride did announced it two weeks before bang what Tyler Childers did, dropped one song like three weeks before, here's the album, that kind of thing. Hmm. Or he just scrapped it, which would be really sad uh, because yeah. I am looking forward to side B. I <laughs> like side A. I want side B. Um, yeah, that's so maybe it he is... scrapped it or it's just being pushed off till next year, but I I, I still want side B. Like, yeah, I, I honestly do too because... That's the reason I was able to see through where we started because I was waiting for side B. <laughs> Yeah, side A, for two reasons, I hope we get a side B. For one, it would just be really weird. It would be real awkward if the side B just never happens. <laughs> and then two, yeah, side A is the only Thomas Rhett album that I genuinely, for the most part, enjoy. Put there's it on a ice. couple, there's, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> put it on ice. We don't have to talk about put it on ice, but... <laughs> But there's a lot of I really think I honestly think the beginning of that album is pretty solid. I do too. And the album as a whole is pretty solid, as, as far as Thomas Red albums go. So you know? optimistically and eagerly waiting for side B, we are. I'm and I actually you guys in my DMs. Actually, I like who. Um, let me pull up one DM. It was just really funny because I posted my like, hey, my Ingrid Andrews videos up, um, mm-hmm. and then who was it that messaged me? Yeah, so some Garrett responds to my Ingrid Andrews story. Nothing to do with this, but I think Thomas Rep forgot about Country Again Side B. And I was like, I love how you used Ingrid as a springboard for that. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, he, like, it's not like he messages me, like, I think Thomas forgot about Side B. He responds to the Ingrid story to say, I think, I love that. Um, but yeah, with that, I think we're good to move on to the next album, correct? And that yeah, next well, album, or do you want to? Well, we were. St- I still want to. I was still kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can keep going. Sorry. Well, I'm not on the co thing anymore. But I w- we were talking about albums and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Riley Green has also been kind of releasing some things. So I like. I'm not saying we'll get one at the end of the like at before the end of the year. But what we've gotten. At least like two. Or, I know at least two, maybe three songs from well, him. You got, uh, There's oh Miles, on, Miles Main. on Main. Um, ah, oh, jeez, what's the other one that came with Miles on Main? Why am I forgetting? Yeah, I think he Something released three women, songs. Right? Oh yeah, he re- definitely has released at least three because there was that one where it's like uh, Wild Woman, Miles on Main, Wild Woman. I hope she's drinking tonight. Get back home. That's four songs. And hell of a way to go. And hell of a way to go. Heck, really? That's He's released that as many? As long as his last album. <laughs> yeah, because he, he released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. He released "Tell the Way to Go" towards the towards at me- and well, this is bizarre to me. Actually, I didn't realize. Why are we not talking about this? Hold up. <laughs> New subject added to the podcast. May he 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 released this in May. Then Miles on Main in June with Wild Woman. And then I hope she's drinking. Okay, and I know there's the whole like, is this song like, this is kind of like, is this like, oh, is Chris Hansen gonna show up and is like Riley Green catching a case? The thing is, I actually like I hope she's drinking tonight. Like that's the, like I like it. I enjoy it. Jerry, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, it's less about the, uh, it's less about the actual lyrics and more about the vibe. I really yeah, like. I, I do like the yeah. pickup in the chorus. I yeah. Do. Um, I hope she's drinking and I, it's just got, it's got good energy. Um, yeah, like he's released, <laughs> I hope she's drinking in it. Yeah. He's got four songs and then he has an, acu- he released an acoustic version of hell the way to go. I don't know. This is weird to me. He's released these five songs. I feel like we might just get like a, Oh, Hey, I'm releasing an album in November or something like that. Cause I wouldn't that- have passed him. It just feels like a lot to release over the summer and just not... And they all have a similar font and colors. It's all blues and oranges and yellows. I don't know if you're... It's like there's very much a uniform thing going on here. 
Um, but that's also kind of just Riley's whole. I mean, not like, they all have that same font and everything. Oh, actually, no, no, not no, really. No, no, no. no. I know. I, I see say, the font you're thinking about. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I was gonna say he's he's hit a couple different styles. Like, and we don't need to talk about the Georgia Time EP cover because it's not good. <laughs> uh but yeah i'm actually it's been as like... far as end of the year stuff goes i'm really excited because there's a lot of things that i'm excited to talk about like, like there's been a lot of really good like I, there's always good stuff we i feel like we say yeah, that all the time 22s or 2022 has <clears throat> been a good year for country yeah. music and I, I think our lists are going to look very different, and I'm really oh, excited 100%. for that. Oh, 100%. But, like, yeah. yeah, this I think this year for country music has been fantastic, and it's only getting better. How did I forget the Gabe Lee album coming out soon? Yep, I knew. Um, see, I, like, there's we're going to keep forgetting there's things. So I know there's other things coming out. Are, Lainey Wilson, Lainey Wilson, look out for that album. That's Tennille Towns, good. actually, because when Randy she did Rogers Masquerades. album coming soon. She did Masquerades at the beginning of the year, and I'm pretty sure when that was happening, she said that it was like, it was supposed to be kind of like this yin and yang thing where like yeah, one EP and then there's this. another EP. Yeah. So I think I think we're still getting another EP because she did recently release another song. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder when she plans on releasing that one. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I know someone was up in my comments like, "Where's the Tennille Towns song?" It's like, oh my gosh, I saw- like, <laughs> I've just reviewed like thirty songs. Like, I'm when- sorry, I missed one. <laughs> that was hilarious to me. You posted those like Within roundup five videos. Five minutes. The first and two comments. The first- were, where's this? Where's this? Where's this? Bro, my, okay. what do you mean where's this? Look at all that I just reviewed. But yeah, okay. So one was funny. Okay, so one really cracked me up. One was the Tennille Towns. Tennille Towns kind of makes sense. She's one a relatively. Was so scary. Yeah, she's a relatively big artist. The other one is Jordan was Jordana Bryant, and the only reason I know who that is is because I don't like, know who that is. <laughs> two, so she's one of those kids that's she's like only like seventeen, I think, and she's been like making like very, very generic like pop country stuff. See, I'm just not interested. And uh, it, but it's like I, it's it almost feels like influencer esque, and it's I. So I, when I was, when she was first starting out, I kind of followed her because I was like, maybe she could. And, but then as she kept going, I was like, okay, this is not, this kind of music is just not what I'm into. So I unfollowed her. But then I think I followed her again for some reason at some point. Just to, I think I was just kind of checking in on her to see if her yeah. music had kind of changed. And this is like recent. And she's, she's gotten a lot older and she's actually like, pl- like she's playing that. shows and she's, putting some more music out and I guess some people like it. It's not the worst stuff I've ever heard, but it's very, I don't know. I still think that she's got a little bit to go um, before I'm like fully like, yeah, she's making better stuff. She's still in high school, I think. So I don't, that's nuts. It's a, she, uh, yeah, it was, I was surprised that, and it was also a dude. Like, I would, like, it's not, not that a dude can't listen to her, but it's her, her, like, kind of vibe is very, like, bedazzled and pink and, like, Yeah, purple. I just looked her up and I definitely and, see that. And, <laughs> and some dude, there was a dude who was like, what about Jordana Bryant? And I was like, bro. And that's why I posted a comment on that video. Yeah, and yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, but Evan, what about insert random <laughs> obligatory artist? <laughs> I was just like, bro, be happy with all the music I just. Uh, <laughs> that, it was so hilarious. Fun. And now I have to make another new music Friday, uh, ideally soon, like today, so it goes up Wednesday because, like, I don't want New Music Friday being a week late every time. But thankfully, there's like seven or eight songs I want to talk about. Much more tame than like twenty-seven or however many were in the other one. There you go. Um, All right, but, but yeah. now we can talk about that other album if you want. Yeah, I was. What was the one other thing I was gonna say? I was totally gonna say something. My bad. Uh oh. My bad, Chief. Oh, I oh, I was just thinking about um, other albums and stuff. We're good. So at the end of the year, do we? Are we gonna do like? Are do EPs also go into like an album list? How did we do that last year? Oh, uh, we can that? do that. Or would we? I, I don't, uh, see, I'm thinking, 
Okay, here's my here's actually a good thing that I wouldn't mind some feedback on because I'm genuinely curious. Uh, and there's two issues of this, right? So I for my album list, I don't normally. It's not that I didn't. It's not that I don't want to include EPs, but there hasn't been any like EPs that are like this is album of the year stuff, except one this year, being and by Eric Church. Hmm. So here's my two dilemmas with and. That's one, interesting because I I agree I disagree with that statement. Not that and isn't good, but that that's the only one. But continue. Okay, it's the one that comes. But there's two issues of and <laughs> for me. One is it came I out last EPs? year, kind of. Yeah, one, do yeah. I include EPs in my album list? Two, do I count it as last year or this year? Yeah. I mean, that is, I think it, technically, I think you could let it slide for this year because for most people, for a lot of people, it came it out was this, new year. this year. And if people yeah. really want to beef me in the comments for including it this year, then you can beef a brick wall because I will not be responding to <laughs> your, you. Can... Oh, actually, <laughs> and came out last year. Actually, I don't care. Mr. <laughs> receiving hair. Um, actually, comments. Evan, that one can't. Go, you can't put that one in the list because it just doesn't count. It doesn't qualify. So, um, actually, <laughs> watch me. Watch uh, me do it pridefully. You, you, you want to see me do it again? In your face. <laughs> in fact, the whole list is just gonna be and. Every okay. Okay. Spot. Now we're on this EP thing. <laughs> I have to know. Okay, so how would you feel about Faded Memories by William Beckman? Uh, isn't that an album, though, or is that released as an EP? But, okay, I thought but then... Called, I, I, know, I know it's shorter, but I thought he called that an album. Okay, that's a good point. I feel like it's in a gray area. It is. So let's, ca- let's call it an album. Is, uh, let's call seven, it an album, I guess. Seven Songs is a strange one. Yeah. If it's an album, what a, okay. it's in, the, what ab- in contention, the, obviously. At, what about... Oh, hold up. My my earbud is making a weird sound. <laughs> uh, what about "Sad Bird" by Gracie York? Did you listen to that oh, ever? I, I did. Is it did. not? Is it not very good? I'm just. I'm just. I'm not saying that you have to like be like. Oh, I take it back. I'm just trying no, to I play. No, like, I know. I know. I'm playing devil devil's advocate here. What Jeez, about that, "R" that, by that Reagan? Back, that goes back to March. I feel like that's. I know. It feels what about like it "R" by Reagan Stewart? That. Like when you say "Sad Bird," for some reason I thought that was. I know it's been a while um see this is what I mean right do I include because it's hard because it's like I think you could do a struggle to put you could do an EP list or something I'm and I might do that because like when I think about albums versus EPs EPs almost have an advantage because there's less so mm-hmm. like you're, they don't have to have as much fluff they can be like uh, yeah you can odds, hit harder your odds of being good for your odds of just hitting on every single song are way higher but if you take almost any album that's going to crack my top 10 list and pick the top four songs, it's probably going to beat out a lot of EPs. <laughs> so maybe I'll have to make like an honorary EP list. Maybe, but it's like, I, I guess there were plenty of EPs, but it's like, you know, the William Beckman, I'm going to call an album. Um, hey, hold up. But then you've got people like Bailey Zerman dropping nine song EPs. So it's like, wait, wait like Summertime <laughs> Blues being EP. Yeah. So hold on. Yeah. Um, I just remembered Drake Milligan's album came out. Do we want to talk about that? I was going to I was gonna point that out as one of the albums that has come out. We can throw oh. it in if we want to. I am I so I think down. it is easily one of the best albums of the year so far. Like, actually. I, like, it just is. Like, I it's, think. Let me pull it up. T- I talk about it in my a little bit in my my new last video on my channel, and it's like, um, to me, Randall King was always this person. I'm just gonna compare it to Randall. King. Well, people were like, Randall King is the second coming of George Strait. Look, I love Randall King, but Drake Milligan is the second coming of George Strait. That's this, how this I feel the, about. Okay, this. hear me out. Hear me out. This is better than <laughs> Randall King's album. I'm just gonna say yeah, that. it just is. Shot Glass was not horrible. It was underwhelming and a little confusing because it's like, okay, half of these songs were released two years ago on your other EP. Yeah, the Drake like, Milligan album definitely trumps it. Why he made it a double album when it's only 14 songs, I don't know. Huh? Or is album tripping? Or is Apple tripping? It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because it's, like, really? it's like Dallas slash Fort Worth. Oh, that's interesting. So the um, first half is Dallas. The second half is Fort Worth, I guess. I don't think it's formatted like that on Spotify. I, I um, think it makes sense that it's laid out like this, given the fact that the title Well, the, implies the name, it. I like that aesthetically. Um, 
Oh, it is kind of... Oh, it, it probably just didn't show it like that on my phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, disc, it says disc one and disc two, and they're, yeah, split up into seven. <laughs> yeah, I can I can see it, because with overdrink and underthinking, it's kind of like the beginning of the second... I'm not going to read into it that much. Well, I'm not... Oh, oh you mean like just like I'm just saying, it kicks off. It feels like yeah, it just, it feels like it's the beginning of a second yeah. thing, is what I'm saying. I'm it's not going to... Dance of a Lifetime being the last one. Mm-hmm. I think, so, or do you want to go first for your thoughts? You said it's one of the best albums of the year. <laughs> it's just really good. Somebody was like, you just like it. Cause, okay, look, first off, yes, there are some similarities with Josh Turner, but this is very much still, Doesn't this is bad. way, this is way more similar to George Strait than I would say to, than it is to Josh Turner. You know, I think that's one, like, okay, this is like an out of uh, country comparison, but it just remind when you say like, um. When you were saying uh, it's just because Josh turned or whatever, it's like when Don Tolliver dropped Heaven or Hell in 2020, and everyone was like, "Bro, it just it sounds like Travis Scott." It's like, yeah, he he just made Travis Scott sound better. So like, what? <laughs> um, but I think for the Drake Milligan album, I think it really like uh, it gets better as it goes. I do think it's a steady climb. Like it it started out with all these. Um, you know, there's a lot of honky tonk songs, a lot of drinking songs on this album, which I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind, but I, I hear songs like "Bad Day to Be a Beer," and I'm just like, I freaking love that song, man. I freaking love it. It's hilarious. I, I, it's hilarious. I get the appeal. It's funny. It almost feels like a Brad Paisley song in how I know it's like that's that's written, but I, I don't. I don't know if um. <laughs> Drake has that funny delivery like Brad does, because when Drake sings it. It, it sounds like some very serious song. It sounds like really? he's trying to make it all serious. Like, it's a bad, like, man, it's truly a bad day to be a beer. Whereas Brad Paisley would be like, yeah, guys, it's a bad day to be a beer. Whatever. But, um. <laughs> I, I actually, I don't know. I don't get that vibe from him, I don't think. I. It feels kind of joking. Because I It feels, it, it feels very tongue in cheek to me. It is. I just feel like Drake's, for the most, Drake's having fun. He's having fun on this album. And then, and then. And then he's sad for one like one song, and then he's having fun again, and then he'll be sad again. Yeah. But then he's so, having fun for a really long time. And I then should he say might... I do really <laughs> like the album. Whether I'm putting it as one of the best of the year, I'm not sure. It's definitely very good though. I would I plan I actually plan to review. I was gonna do separate videos, but at this point, I feel like with all the albums coming out, I need to just get like Kelsey, Kane, Drake, yeah, all of them out of the way. Uh, Charlie Crockett, Colby Cooper, some other names that I want to talk about. Um. Oh, I didn't but, listen to Colby Cooper. What? How was that? How was that Colby Cooper? Just like a brief, like, I Very I good to... Texas rock, solid. Really? Through and through, good song. Okay, yeah, the, like very the, only thing I, the only thing I think I've heard from it was, it's I think too. Cyrus said something in one of his Instagram posts, or like on a, on a sto- Instagram story. He didn't say it was horrible, but he was like, I think he was kind of saying that it was worse than the co-album. Uh well I I could be wrong though I could be misinterpreting what I saw so I'm I think, not I think like I a... think the the Colby album is more I, basic sounds like an insult I don't mean basic as an insult but I think like uh it's more straightforward it's more okay. standard country rock but I think it's a very good album um but with Drake Milligan I do like the fun moments. Uh, do I think they're the most interesting? No. Was I getting kind of tired of some of them? Yes. But then, as I said, I think the album just got better as it went. Some standouts for me. Hearts Don't Break Even. I love that song. I'm just generally going to cling to the sadder or like sure lighter songs. It's just me. So Hearts Don't Break Even, I really like. I thought Dance of a Lifetime was very good. I think uh, when then... fun songs are done in the honky-tonk, like, like kind of like driving way... And they're done in this kind of George Strait esque way. I think that's the thing that appeals to me the most because mm-hmm. I really like that kind of George Strait thing. Like that's the why I liked. Um, crap! Why can I not think of it now? Of course, George Strait's most recent album that had a uh, yeah all the so- stuff on it. The song with Willie and like I really liked that album. And I feel like I'm like. <laughs> It's. Uh, it seems like a, maybe I don't because I can't remember anything, but I can't remember anything. So this is true. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I do. But I get well, that it's, thing, di- right? it's different for it's everybody. The 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 more upbeat songs on this album are good. They're not. 
they're nothing crazy that I would like be like, oh my gosh, this. But they, they're definitely good. They get the job done. But what do I you think, think of my two favorites? My, okay. Are back to back. It, it's it got to be going down swinging. Oh my gosh, is that ever an awesome throwback old time country song that is just hilarious with all the Vince different Gill. ways that going down swinging all the different context he puts that line in and then save it for a sunny day what a great what a great idea instead of saving it for a rainy day he's gonna save his happiness for a sunny day and just be sad today love <laughs> that song those are my two favorites and they're back to back so mm. drake there album very good check out i we should start I st- t- just saying we should start like talking about music like parker mccollum you see the tweet where he's like someone's like, i know that out put out that album i know you're sitting on and he's like uh, i know what do you say he's like Need more song, better song, then put out. I think that's how we should review. Like, Drake album, good. Very good. Listen. <laughs> I actually... Okay, real quick. T- two things. First, I'm gonna... We'll wrap up the Drake Milligan talk. Just to get this out there. I think my favorite song is still uh, Kiss Goodbye All Night. I just think it's a really fun time. Second, I have watched a couple recent Fantano videos because I fell for the clickbait. I was that's intrigued. Stuff. I was there was the Drake stuff. How <laughs> are we going here? <laughs> I thought oh, it was whole... okay. So first off, an... I barely watched Fantano's videos. So I'm watching in this first video. Fantano's like it says Drake DM'd me. Drake does DM him, but it's you find out later that the DMs in this video Fantano is faked, and you find out why. But basically, Fantano has worked with somebody else to fake these DMs, and. To make so it so it looks that like Drake texted him a vegan cookie recipe. Of a vegan chocolate chip cookie recipe. And so the whole video is just Fantano just reading the, the ingredients basically. And I the bought instructions. it. Drake and I bought it. Guy to send a I, vegan cookie I, recipe. And I was like, I was like, is is this real? And by the end of the video, I was like, I'm not like, I don't watch enough Fantano things. I know that I've heard that he can kind of prank, be a prankster. Yeah. Can kind of jokes. mess around a little bit. He and so but i at that time i wasn't aware of as aware of that as i am now and so i was like huh that's really bizarre and then he posts fantano posted a second video responding to so apparently drake got upset because fantano ghosted him (laughs) no because fantano he he texted fantano like Using his rating score, yeah. your existence is a light, is a one. light one, and the one is because you're alive and because you wife the black girl. I yeah, give your existence a light to decent one, just out of bitterness because Fantano doesn't like has. Well, no, he talked very positively about. Some he likes items, a couple of it. Yeah, but he his likes most a couple. Recent ones, Fantano hasn't liked. So Drake went out of his way to DM him. Then when Fantano gave him a lifeline by faking the DMs to make Drake look funny. Drake goes out of his way to leak the DMs that make he, himself look bad. Yeah, he leaks like, his own DMs. He leaks his <laughs> own DMs that make him look bad. Then he's getting completely he, trolled. He looks. Right, he so, leaks the this, DMs that. <laughs> this guy Drake. Okay. The, half of his persona is built on him being like, I don't even worry about you guys. I'm so. I'm so clear of everyone in life. I'm so above. It doesn't matter what you think. It clearly does. You're yeah. going on 40 and you're angrily DMing music critics that didn't like your last album. What are you doing? And it's such a playground yeah. insult, too. Your existence is a light to decent one. No, certified <laughs> lover boy was. Okay? Bro, that's you can't just bull- girls want girls. You can't legitimately go on a song and say, say that you a lesbian girl, me too, and expect to get some crazy praise. <laughs> I don't know how we got on this topic, but it was the I, funniest thing. I thought it was hilarious. I think you mentioned Drake, and it reminded me of the. Uh, I'm not oh, actually. Yeah. I'm actually not sure what it was. Well, maybe I don't. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Drizzy Milligan. Drizzy. <laughs> Cut, we'll call Drake Milligan Drizzy, Drizzy every time. Okay, we... <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, I just having... thought it was hilarious. I don't listen to Drake. I just it thought pretty funny. It something about. The oh, my only the only way my Drake content is watching the totally staged videos of him putting up threes in pickup games at the at the gym. You know, it's those videos. <laughs> Have you seen the memes where it's like you know, like if you if you beat Drake in in his house, you're not allowed back in. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play easy with Drake. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. 
thing is, he's he's that he's the fact that he's making that many threes. He's obviously decent at shooting. Well, you yeah, know? An NBA regulation court in your house, like so yeah, you get some practice in. Yeah, but I don't know. It's I thought it was Drake, hilarious. funny guy has some good music, has yeah. some bad music, and is a, 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 a strange individual. But with that, I think we can move on to the second album. I say second album. We've talked about seven by now. Um, we'll quickly go over this, but I, I am very excited. Kelsey Ballerini's album, Subject to Change, came out. I was really looking forward to this one in the lead up. And after it, now that it's out, I've only listened to it once. I should preface Oh, really? That. I've, well, because I was away for part of the weekend with no Wi-Fi at a wedding so gotcha. I didn't actually get to it until Sunday is when I finally had the chance to like download it and listen to it. Um, so yeah, I've only listened to it once so far, but man, do I ever think this is a step in the right direction for her? Like I, I'll, I'll let you on a second. I'm just going to vent this over. You're good. You're good. I really enjoyed this album. Now, when I say really enjoyed, do I think it's like at, at eight or nine out of 10? no, no, it's not on that level. Yeah. But, like, relative to Kelsey's other work, I think this is a great step forward. I thought it was a really enjoyable album. I think the poppier moments go down way, way smoother. I think they're way better fit. They don't, like, disrupt the album as much as they just kind of play off it. But, you know, in the lead-up, she said, like, this is going to be my most country album. And everyone says that. We, we all hear that. Every time someone's been like, this is I my think most it country. really is. This is my co- most country album. But th- this is. This is her most country album. Like It's not like see. a... It isn't a, ni- a 90s country album. But... No. But it's... It, country- it has its it has moments. It, yeah. It's like even... Sure, it has some popular stuff. Like Love is a Cowboy, which has grown on me. I freaking like, love... I, I like, like that sure one a Love lot. is a Cowboy is a pop country blend. But it's not pop country in the way that like her old stuff was or in the way that someone like dan and shay or like i don't know like a uh old time mary morris's pop country it's just like smooth acoustic music that like because of how i think because of how uh non-distinct like it's not like very pop or very it's not like a blend of very pop and very country it's just kind of a, a gray area in between yeah, it's pop country, but it sounds great. And I, there was a lot of moments on this thing where I was like, holy crap. Like, I can't help myself. That song, mm-hmm. again, I've only listened to it once, but I couldn't help but think, like, this sounds like something Shania Twain would be bumping back in the day. Like, yeah. I can't help myself. I was hearing Which that is funny I- because she di- co- she literally just covered a Shania Twain song at the, uh, what was it that? I don't, there's too many award shows. The award shows oh, that happened she? like, two, I didn't even see that. She literally dressed up like Shania and I even had Shania's like background dancers and she sang, uh, what did she sing? She sang one of like Shania's most famous songs. I man, think I feel like, like woman she, that has the dancers with it. I don't, well, it might, I don't think it was that one. I don't know. Continue though. Regardless, I just thought yeah. that was, that was just an interesting thing I, that you pointed out. The way the fiddle just shreds on, I can't help myself and all of the different uh, if I'm remembering it correctly, I think there's some different key changes and chord switches throughout. It, it, the background vocals, too, echoing her back. I was like, this is an absolute banger. And then it goes straight into arguably my favorite song, If You Go Down, I'm Going Down Too. I what enjoy that one. a fantastic song. I think that's probably my favorite, which I know, Evan, like, I was surprised. I was like, it's not one of the, like, sadder, softer moments that I'm liking the most. But if you go down and going down to is this crazy fun song, a great like extreme metaphor of like having a friend's back saying like, if we're criminals, like if you go down, I'm going down to, I'd put my hand on the Bible and lie for your sake. Yeah. Cause it's we really both good. got our bodies in the same ditch and everything. I, and it's completely acoustic. It's completely fun. I adore that song. And so yeah, overall subject to change Kelsey Ballerini. I think it's a, she she came through with her word. It is definitely her most country album. Is it entirely country? No. But I think it the sound is great. If this is what people like Kelsey Ballerini, who like just a few years ago was doing stuff like uh, songs with Halsey and whatnot, right? If this is what though if this is what people in that category want to start releasing, I'm all here for it. If this is what we're gonna push, I'm all here for it. I love it. Probably I, with that in mind, probably like a, a six and a half or a seven and a half in, in there. Okay. But 
yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I like I like what this album means. I like it. There's a lot of I definitely enjoy this album and it's I find myself this album kind of really solidified and it helped me realize something is that I have slowly kind of I'm really starting to enjoy like female pop country a little bit more than I maybe would have expected because with like Tennille Towns and Kelsey Ballerini and I'm probably forgetting some other people. I'm kind of I'm kind of hopping on the, oh, I kind of enjoy this, this like emotional, I'm identifying with all these other teenage girls and it's a little, uh, it's a little jarring. <laughs> but I think no. like, I what? found myself, I found myself, um, in that same spot where it's like, I'm really enjoying female pop country lately. Uh, mm-hmm. but I think that's because. There's a big difference between 2022 female pop That's country true. and 2018 female pop. Like, if you go back a few years, it's stuff like I Hope by Gabby Barrett. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? Like, I still <laughs> egregiously, like, passionately disagree. Gabby Barrett has song. one song that I enjoy, actually. <laughs> Let me. But it's like that pop country is, is, it's not the same as it was a few years ago. Sure, there still is some pretty bad pop country out there. But when you look at people like Kelsey, you're looking at people like Ingrid, which sure, I, I thought the Ingrid album was underwhelming, but it's not like it was bad or like offensively weird or anything like that. And then you, you again, you look at people like Tennille Towns, like pop country, especially by the females has just gotten yeah, uh, yeah. much more appealing. I think it sounds a lot better. So I, I, I would agree with that. I've been liking female pop country lately. Yeah, it's really interesting. The song by Gabby Barrett real quick is, the, is Pick Me Up. I, I yeah, think it's actually yeah, pretty you've talked about that for sure. Yeah. Um, but anyway, get back on the Kelsey thing, Jaren. Um, I just, I did. I thought, I thought this was a really solid album. My biggest complaints actually come from some of the production decisions. Um, and some of them are kind of frustrating for me. Because, like... I mean, I'll do my best to recall, but again, I've only heard it once, so... Yeah. If I remember correctly... And I can't help myself. I love, I can't help myself. I love, I love the, I just like, I love everything about it, except if I remember correctly, and I'm listening to it right now to see if, yeah, yeah, there's some background singers at the very end of the chorus. And it's like this weird, like, they're like, she can't help me. It's like weird. And I'm like, I don't. I like that part. I like that part. I just, I, I understand. It does feel kind of like a uh, Shania Twain-esque thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I could definitely do without it. <laughs> like if it just, if it just wasn't there, I think, I think it makes me. Oh, see, I think it adds a lot. I think it adds a lot. <laughs> the thing is, I've, I have listened to this. This is probably my fourth time listening to this song now listening to it right now and i've really I, it's not bad it's still not bad i just it, it kind of every time that part comes up it bothers yeah. me just a little yeah. bit um but i really love is a cowboy i think is super i just really like that one i like the atmosphere muscle memory is fun um i really like i think it was universe and weather i think are kind of some underrated ones that i think are on the smaller end of like the streaming count that I think yeah. are very good. Um, My recollection wa- of the, the park is isn't good. as good because I was only like half listening to it because I was at the gym with a friend. Yeah. So it's like you catch a verse here and then you're on to the next song and you catch a chorus there. So one my, thing, my back half recollection isn't as good. One thing that I noticed yesterday, I was listening while I was mowing my neighbor's lawn. Um, so the 11th track is heart first, which is kind of like, oh, I'm going in heart first. I'm just putting all my chips in like on this relationship with this guy that I literally, I flirted with him at the bar. We're kissing in the back of my car. It's like, it might be love. It might not be, but I'm, I'm going in heart first, like that kind of thing. And then literally the exact, the next song, the, the next song is your, is her Carly and Kelly telling this dude to go home because he's drunk because they're not interested in hooking up but in the song before she was literally doing that maybe could have adjusted some of the uh, tracks yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had that same thought i i didn't yeah. think of that when i, I was w- talking about the album but i yeah when i was listening i did think i was like mm, I, don't I, know was, that. I was i was like this is that was an interesting choice they're both solid songs i think i was just like huh that's uh interesting i am i'm also slightly i'm not trying to i'm not 
don't like being a super gossipy person. I'm not going to like say anything, but it's, I wonder how much of the song was written because the, like that divorce with Morgan Evans got announced like recent. three or four, three, about like four weeks ago, I think. So Maybe like four or five. This album was probably written before that. I think. At the same know? time, though, then I hear songs like I Guess They Call It Falling. Yeah, and it's like, that could totally be that's some... a rip on Morgan Evans. Yeah. But... Well, I don't even... There's one song where she's... I... It's very near the end. Maybe it is... I think it's Doing My Best, maybe. Where she talks about getting married young and kind of not like having a lot of work to do and like having a lot of stress and like that kind of thing and just mentally being kind of taxing and mm -hmm. i'm like this kind of feels like i wonder because yeah the album just came out right but and yeah the divorce didn't happen until but the thing is some of these out some of these songs could have been written in the months before the divorce actually got announced like solidified you know so like some of these songs that's true could, could still very behind yeah. the scenes before the announcement yeah. comes yeah and so i'm thinking huh i just i just wonder if that's the case i'm not like i said i've said previous I, I know i've joked a little bit about it with joe and stuff joe. but divorce does suck it's like but actually joe not does, a great that thing. is one of my favorite clips <laughs> ever of you saying that <laughs> It was okay. Look, that was funny, but I I still kind of feel bad because I feel like if if Kelsey like somehow ever saw that, I would just like feel so bad because like divorce really does suck, and I really <laughs> do I really do hurt for her because especially like her and Carly are very similar in that sense. Now I don't I'm not saying the relationship issues were exactly the same. Carly kind of seems. Where's the collab album between Morgan Car Evans and Michael? Ray? And my. <laughs> K K Kelsey and Carly have come together. And they have now more war of the collab yeah. albums, like the divorcees. <laughs> no, but I do think. I just wonder. I don't need to know more of her personal life. That's not our. I don't need that. I just wonder because Carly very much dealt with it in her own way. It was a very like visceral album that was created, mm -hmm. and Kelsey seems to maybe just be taking it differently. I'm not saying she's handling it better. She just seems to be handling it. Maybe a little bit differently, but I guess we'll see. Time will tell. It's been longer for Carly since that has happened. I think it's the literally... divorce between Kelsey and Morgan, though, is a lot smoother than the one between. Carly yeah, I, 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 we Ray. obviously, I think, I think something about that. <laughs> that I think, I think Michael Ray might have. Uh... It was quite. Yeah, there seemed to be a little more than meets the eye with how bitter Carly Pierce yeah. came back. Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I think that Kelsey doesn't hate Morgan Evans. I have a feeling, I have a feeling it was just one of those situations where it just didn't really work out, yeah, mm -hmm. and they and they kind of just had the, and maybe they didn't want to, but they felt that it was the best it's thing. It's like a to mutual, do. yeah, yeah, which definitely sucks. was not the case with Carly and Michael. But the, this is a solid <laughs> album. Uh, I just think some of the production, it's mostly, um, it's mostly on. I can't help myself. Mostly because I really like that uh, that that song. Because I think it's a lot of fun. There's just a few parts you don't like. But there's it. just some parts that I don't like, and I hate that I don't like some of it, because I like mm. the rest of it. Um, mm, I've been there. Uh, yeah, it's solid. I don't... Rating on the fly? Do you have one? <sighs> I think I could do with it being a little shorter. There's a couple tracks towards the end that I think maybe could be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm... I think I like it about the same as the co album, so I'll go with an eight. Oh. I did really enjoy it. That's I really, good. I well, the thing is, I really like "Love Is a Cowboy." Like, I just really like it. You've always been really high on that song. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also really enjoy the little things. Actually, it kind of reminds that song's me. That going on me. The little things reminds me of almost like. I don't know. Like, there's like an era from my childhood where pop kind of sounded like that mm -hmm. and maybe i think maybe that kind of sends some dopamine to my brain and i like it i think but yeah i'd probably say eight on the fly pretty darn good yeah, all right yeah. well I think, I think it was decent what, what, what's that, the next thing i forget I think we're good to go into what are we listening to right <laughs> oh shoot what am i listening to bro you i know what? <laughs> i have been so busy <laughs> <laughs> we can we can do a one stranded uh, whatever we listen to because I have something to bring. Well, I 
I can definitely bring something to this. I've just, I've been listening to, actually, I've been listening to a lot of di- just different things. But go ahead and I'll let you go first and I'll pull something out. So, <laughs> I, I know what I've been listening to. It's just, it's, it was hard to bring one thing and I'll explain why. So, I'm generally just bringing an entire artist, which sounds really <laughs> dumb. And why do I feel like, now, and so, I should have checked back. Because I feel like maybe I've brought this guy or one of his songs or something in the past. And it would have been around this time last year. But the guy's name is No Fun Haas or House, right? And especially as it started turning fall, the leaves around me have started going a little more yellow, a little more red. I bust out this guy's music so unapologetically. It's like indie folk pop, and it's perfect for the fall. So... As much as he only has one album, it's called Fetch Pup. It it, it, it was all right, like it it, it was decent. Uh, but he has just a bunch of like singles that I specifically love on their own, um, like My Pomegranate or Falling Down, Your Driveway, the the girl that didn't exist. Like there's a lot of specific songs that are all singles that aren't on a project, but just generally the guy's name is No Fun House or House Harris H A U S. And yeah, I, like when the fall comes around, this guy's music comes out for me. And again, I apologize. I now that I'm saying it, maybe it's just deja vu. But I I feel like maybe I've brought something I, of his before. I don't remember. Um, but regardless, I don't, it doesn't it doesn't sound familiar. So I don't know. The, good. Maybe maybe it's just some weird deja vu moment. But uh, yeah, just generally his discography, I think, is perfect for this time of year. It's perfect for sweater weather. Uh, and that is what I've been listening to. But again, since it's all his discography is really scattered with singles and whatnot, I'm kind of just bringing him. Go check it yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Um, I've got an interesting one, I think. Uh, I had to look at what I, I've just been kind of like diving into a lot of different things. I've been listening to Coldplay a lot recently. I'm not bringing Coldplay. Mm, okay. But um, just because... I've actually been thinking about doing a video on them. That might be happening. I might even record that today, so we'll see. Um... I've right, been listening to something. You can hear the dog in the background, right? I can, I can. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go on mute. Keep talking. Okay. Uh, I can. Uh, I have been listening to something lovely, a little. <laughs> I've been listening to something lovely a little bit recently by Ashley Campbell. Just kind of been like, oh yeah, I really like. I really like this album. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, what else? But the one I want to bring is an album called Indiana uh, by a guy from Indiana Bias. who is actually from my hometown. Ooh, um, Anderson. Yeah. Uh, John McLaughlin was... Um, and I wonder... I'll be su- interested to see if anybody else knows him. He's had some semi-big... Okay, hold on, because I have something to say, but I need to shut this freaking dog up! <laughs> okay, okay. We'll put a pause. Okay, so John McGon, McG- I can't talk. He grew up in Anderson, um, just like I did where I was from. Um, and he went to Anderson University actually. And he released an- this is his first album. He released was called Indiana, kind of a little bit of a love letter just to Indiana where he's from. I think he actually lives in Nashville now. Um, and it's his career is interesting because i I want to know more about it and he's still making music and stuff i think he's been signed to a couple different labels he even played at the grammys one year i believe uh because he did a song for the disney movie called uh enchanted back in like 2000 when was that i don't know uh like i think it was late might have been 2009 or something um, and I think he also toured with like Elton I've been, John. I've been, I've been muted. <laughs> I didn't say anything important though. I just said like, why does that name sound familiar? Keep going. Okay. You're good. Um, I mean, I could hear you, so I don't know. Yeah, they, you could, but the viewers couldn't. The Actually, viewers couldn't. I wasn't okay. really saying anything. Continue gotcha. Though. All right. <clears throat> I don't know. It's, uh, I think his album, this album in particular, Indiana captures 
this kind of sound and time of kind of contemporary alternative singer songwriter like late 2000s stuff like it feels like it came from the late 2000s like every band kind of had a similar sound like not every band sounded exactly the same but like you know maroon 5 back then sounds a lot different than maroon 5 now you know same thing with one republic one republic probably could have been called alt rock back in the day but now it's like no they are definitely not alt rock that is not what they are same with like uh, imagine dragons when they started Mm -hmm. out they were kind of alt rock now they're kind of not um so it's that kind of vibe i don't really know how else to describe it but there's a song called beautiful disaster on this album that's like kind of like it's just really good it feels cinematic and it's one of those songs where they're talking about like it's a guy john talking about a girl and it's kind of in reverence in a way okay um kind of like uh why can I not think of his name? Oh my gosh. Uh, John Mayer. Jeez. I couldn't think oh. of John Mayer's name. Kind of like John Mayer has the song, uh, is it Daughters? Yep. Yep. It kind of has a sim- kind of similar vibe to me in the context of what is being sung about. Okay. Um, but it's a really solid album. Um, I think it it's kind of like this time capsule of like, wow, this is a... Honestly, a better album than it should be, especially for a guy of how young he was at his age. He wasn't like somebody who got had been groomed for the industry, you know. Yeah. And he kind of I respect that John has kind of looking at his discography, it seems like he's kind of done his own thing. Even mm-hmm. though he got kind of got popular at the beginning of his career, he didn't he didn't really he didn't seem to get swept away. One thing that I've noticed his I think his first his first couple albums were still when like CDs were a big thing. So his, uh, I think his streams don't reflect how popular he was back. That's fair. Because if you're popular for a moment in time, that wouldn't show. Yeah. His, uh, he was popular back like at the latter end of like CDs lifetime. He's still like, he still has people that listen to him, but it's not, it's it's not exactly the same. I mm-hmm. he has another album called Okay Now that I listen to a little bit. But yeah, this song, Industry and uh, Beautiful Disaster are the ones that I'm most familiar with. Human is also a pretty solid track, but I would recommend it. It's cool, and I like I like that the album cover of this song, sorry, of this album, is literally just him. And uh, I think the fit is actually for sometimes two thousand fits. <laughs> can be pretty bad, but I think the fit is solid. And I like that it's literally just a cornfield and a blue sky because that is like, that's Indiana. That's like, that's Indiana to me. It, this this album art feels like home. And I also like the uh, 2000s, like font went for the title, Indiana on the actual album art. It's like, there's like that font that they used. It's like faded. It's like supposed to feel kind of, you know what I'm talking about? It's, I don't know. You just see it. And it was a very 2000s thing. And I like that. I like this album feels like a time capsule. And so I think that's why I love those. I love those though. Yeah. So check it out. I think some people might like it. It's not country. Um, I don't really know exactly what to call it, but yeah, listen to it. With that, that, so that's what we're listening to. That's what we've been listening to. Um, <coughs> now, the the next question that people want to know, Jaren, is who the frick is yeah, that guy? I, I actually did prep for this segment. Um, I know last time, y'all might have been disappointed. I spaced it. Ugh, life's been hectic. But here we are. We Here we are. I prepped. Uh, I, I worked on it this morning before the uh, before we sat down to record. And I'm excited for this one. I feel yeah. like... I feel like I feel like this could be difficult but also could be a really easy round depending on Okay, just, it depends if you know the specific. Yeah, some of these gotcha. specific things. I feel like one of these you'll probably will get. I tried to make it hard, but it was a okay. relatively relatively well-known artist. So, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Hit me. So, Let's first do. artist Play along, one. obviously at home. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I need to I had that John McLaughlin album playing in the background while I was talking about it and it was a little loud. Okay. First clue. 
This artist has made six studio albums and is signed to Big Machine Records. Six albums, Big Machine. Uh, see that it's these labels that I need to know better. It's these labels. <laughs> the thing that I need is, to know better. I don't want to. I don't like doing clues with like just a bunch of labels. But sometimes, but it just makes sense. Sometimes it I. Gives, it gives. Sometimes I have to without sure. giving. Yeah, sometimes I have to. Some of the other clues give it away, so I have to kind of. It's a it's six a crutch, albums, but six albums, I have to. Six albums. Um. Gosh, that's tough. Cause now I'm thinking of artists. That yeah, six literally all you, albums. literally all you have to work with is a record label and six albums. So, and even then, yeah. like right now in 60 seconds, how many artists can I think of with specifically six albums? Not many. So I guarantee my guess is gonna be wrong here. Yeah, I'm not timing you right now either. Because... Um, <laughs> we'll call it 30 seconds. Cody Johnson has six albums? I don't think he's on Big Machine, but he has six albums. Let's just, you know what? For the sake of not having anything else, I'm going to throw Cody Johnson out there. because I, I think that's a good guess, but it is not Cody Johnson. I don't think he's Big Machine, though, but I think he has six albums, if I'm thinking correctly. He's definitely got around six. I'm actually not sure. Um, okay. Second clue. This artist is also a radio host. Co-hosting a sports show out of Little Rock, Arkansas. That should be a bigger clue. Out of Arkansas. See that when I uh, read this, I think I like kind of knew it, but like if I if somebody had like asked me this, I would not like. I would not have. But it makes that. sense. It makes sense. Out of Arkansas. And I, I I will say this isn't an official clue, but I do think that this person is from Arkansas, or at least yeah, or at least from that Arkansas. general area. Oh man, um, I'm not trying to be stupid. Can I look up where Arkansas is? <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, you can. So it's I can a, get a geographical area of what I'm dealing with here. So Arkansas is Arkansas, in so, the southern wait, U.S. Not. It's kind of around map of USA. Yeah, it's just kind so of. No one thinks I'm cheating. I'm just legit googling. We couldn't. Oh, see that. okay. Very yeah. good thing. I. I can't hear you. All of a sudden, I can't hear you. I don't know why. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. I'm scared, Evan. Evan, I'm scared. Evan, Evan, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared, Evan. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you. What okay, happened? Okay, my mic just went out. Um, we're good now. Okay. I am very glad <laughs> that you let me Google that because I was thinking Arkansas in the way wrong spot. Where did you think Arkansas was? I thought Arkansas was like northwest. No, yeah. Arkansas is definitely um, more southern. I'm trying to think, where are some artists that have mentioned Arkansas? Jeez. Oh, man. Um... Maybe I should have had my second artist go first. I feel like this one, might, that one, might have been a little bit easier than this one in hindsight. They have a sports it's all good. show. Who's an athlete? Well, don't think. Just think of think of artists who would be into like baseball, football. Like who fits that kind of. I'm think thinking about those like artists. Riley Green. I'm thinking like Ernest. I'm thinking. Um... Oh, why is there one I'm blanking on? I know there's one other baseball player. Well, I'm going to need a... We've been on this for a little hot second. I know right. we had a... So you know what? We're going to throw it absolutely like... This is not it. But we're we're going to say Dustin Lynch. That's so wrong. But he seems it's like... Not, he it seems is like not the Dustin kind of guy Lynch. that would put makeup on and step in front of the camera and talk about sports. It is not Dustin Lynch. All right. <clears throat> oh, man. I, sports. All right. <clears throat> this artist is a supporter of the Republican Party. In 2016, they endorsed Donald Trump in the presidential election, praising okay, him as a, that. quote, out-of-the-box, quote, candidate. Now I think... So I think I was thinking... Wait. No. No, because... Hold on. Because <laughs> then I was thinking... When you say that, I was thinking, like, Toby Keith. That sounds like the area he's from. But I was like, wait, Toby Keith has way more than six albums. So it's not that. Okay. Yeah. Um, outspoken Republican supporter. I don't think they're as violently outspoken as Toby Keith. So don't but, like but, get. But, but, but they're outspoken Republican from 
Arkansas into sports. Oh, man. Oh, man. This one sent me for a whirl. I really... I might have to tap out. I don't know. It's all good. Just just throw, throw out a guess. Who do you... I, it is a guy, right? I'll... I'll said, yeah, it's a guy. I think I'll you say. said him at some point. Oh, he, I might have. Oh, man. But since, I, I'll just tell you, yeah, it's a guy. Since you're, since we're having a hard time with this one, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> just a, Larry I, Fleet. No, not Larry Fleet. <laughs> it is Justin yes. Moore. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, he is from Arkansas too. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. He I feel like I feel like he Nothing feels like a guy. I feel like to me, he feels like a guy that's like from Louisiana yeah. or he's like from Texas. But he, but he, but Louis. I think Louisiana. No, is like, Arkansas like, makes sense. I just thought he feels like he's. I how long has he been around? He feels like he should have had more than six albums. He's been around for more than a decade. His Since albums... 2009. So I guess that's like one every two years. Yeah. I just feel like he's been around. For longer i think he, he has like a radio show but he also i think he also um, has a podcast or something i did not know he was into sports so well he's a very like he just you could look at him and know that he watches football like he's a guy yeah that, yeah yeah well oh for one it's a yeah, it's all good i think you have a solid chance of getting the second one see that's that pressure on though i'm sorry don't right, don't all right let's too. no let's go into it clear mind you you're this is a very indie artist. You're not going to know who this is. It's going to be extremely <laughs> difficult. <clears throat> Luke Combs. <laughs> uh, all right. right. In 2015, this artist signed to Panac... I don't... I'm not sure how to read... <laughs> pronounce this. Panacea? I'm sorry. It's P-A-N-A-C-E-A. Panacea Records and released their debut album... EP. Sorry, not album. Debut EP, Standalone. Do I need to read that again? Standalone. Yeah. Is the name of the EP? Mm-hmm. Isn't that... Wait. Oh, no. Jeez. I almost had a really big mental lapse. I, was, I For some reason, I was thinking that time, and I was thinking Stand Out by Morgan Wallen. That's, that's not standalone. Those are not the same thing. Um, but the timeline matches up. Literally the name of the EP. That should it was it like not a very big thing because I feel like literally the name of the EP should be a much bigger hint. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm shutting off. I'm shutting off. Why can't I think standalone? My brain's leaving. <laughs> I, I I don't know what's going on. It's all good. It's all good. Well, just it might okay, but if you're not saying the or sorry, if you're saying the name of the EP, it couldn't have been that like it must have just been one of those small little EPs that an artist starts with that no one really knows. Otherwise you wouldn't go through with the name. Yeah. And they started in twenty fifteen. I hate the way you're smiling. <laughs> I hate the way you're smiling. Because that's making me think that I should know this like instantly. No, don't just... <laughs> Panacea, too. That's messing me up. Or Panacea. I don't... I've never... I don't even... I don't get... I have no idea what... I don't even know if that record exists. That label exists. So, don't even... Like, exists anymore, I mean. Alright, just throw one out there. Come on. Simply for the... F this isn't it, but simply for the fact that we talked about him today, I'm... Co Wetzel, but he's on Yellow Bush. He's in it, it is not Co Wetzel. It's not, it's not Co Wetzel. He's on Yellow Bush Road. <laughs> Whew, okay. I, f I feel like this is going to give it away. I couldn't find anything better. It should. I hope it does because All the right. way you're laughing at that for. Shoot, hold on. Before. Mike, what? What? Should I know that EP? Like. You do. You do know. I do? Then yeah, why is um, it not ringing a bell? What the heck? It's okay. It's okay, Evan. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm Second gonna clue. I'm gonna hate this, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do that as the last clue because I feel like that's more obvious. Okay. <clears throat> this artist was arrested for disorderly conduct after an altercation in a, at a steakhouse in May 2020. For what? Misorderly conduct at a steakhouse? Dis disorderly conduct at a steakhouse in 2020. 
May 2020. Freaking. I know if I get if got the disorderly or but that was public intoxication, but it was in 2022. I hate the amount of parallels. But he didn't have a standalone EP, or did he? That wasn't 2022. No. T- oh, you say 2022? No, I said 2020. You just said yeah. 2022. No, 2020 as well. 2020. Oh. Gotcha. Sorry. <laughs> Am I missing a Morgan Wallen standalone EP? Is that what's happening here? Because like that lines up. But he, that was at a Kid Rock bar. Kid Rock's not a steakhouse. Unless it is, and I'm stupid. I'm just sorry. I'm just really enjoying this. Like, you're like, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> the way that this is making you be like, I'm upset. <laughs> Kate, hold on. Just to get it off my head. Morgan Wallen. Is that, is that guess? Are That's you guessing? my guess. Cause yeah, is... it's Morgan Wallen. Oh, it is. Yeah, so it is. Did... So, I was... so, wait, so I you are literally gaslighting EP. yourself. The standalone EP, you said it was the standout EP, and so you literally just lied to yourself. Oh, and... my... the song is standout. Yeah, yeah. And Oh, my gosh, yeah. I'm so stupid. And, then... and so my second <laughs> clue that I wrote down then, was that... Is Kid Rock a steakhouse? I thought so it was. I think it is technically... It's a, ste- a lot of steakhouses have bars... And, and so in the, in the Wikipedia it, article, it called it a steakhouse. And so I was like, I'm running with that because oh if God. I say, if I say Kid Rock's bar, it's just going to, that's, that's too obvious, you know? I and, was so, they're beside each other in his discog. I was thinking stand out, but it's yep. stand alone. Yeah. But you still got it. That's so okay, the thing. I had to guess it because it was bugging me. That was almost really bad. <laughs> yeah, I you were like co Wetzel, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> bro. I. But so, so my other so the clues that I switched. The clue that I had as the second clue was that he that this artist was born in Sneedville, and I knew that you would have gotten that. You yeah, would have gotten yeah because I don't know anyone else from Sneedville. Yeah, and at that I, point, I would have said, "Okay, disorderly conduct in 2020." Had an EP in 2015. He had too many. I thought about maybe making one of those clues. Like he has a two year. This artist has a two year old son. But it's oh, like okay. that just feels like I, I don't know, that one felt lame. So I really set myself up for a disaster by you got it. guessing the title. You clutched of EP. up. You clutched I got up. it. I got it. Okay. Okay. So we're one. We're one for two. <laughs> those are good hints on him, though. Yeah. I. I. It was hard to. He's so big, you know. It was hard to get some. You literally in. gave the name of the EP. Like, that should have yeah. been. <laughs> yeah. I literally was like, I was debating. I was like, do. Okay, the one thing was, I was I was at an if impasse. If you didn't give me the title, I probably would have got it. If you didn't say stand alone, I wouldn't have second guessed myself. I probably would have just guessed. If so, if I had just said in 2015, this artist signed to Panacea Records and released their debut EP. I probably would have just guessed him because I wouldn't have second guessed it. I would have said, okay, let's start huh. easy. Let's go more than one. I don't know. Oh, I felt I bad. It. I um, felt that that was way too general because I didn't even know what Panacea Records was. So I felt like that was almost too difficult. But whatever. We We're on to the third we one. Got it. One for two. Shaky. It's shaky. Too. I feel like I feel. I'm not. I won't say anything. But I. 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 I won't say anything. I. I know. I literally just. I'll just shut up, Jaron. Just shut up and give him a clue. All right. <clears throat> Last one. Artist number three. First clue. This artist's father served as the 14th premiere of Saskatchewan. That's Coulter Wall. <laughs> I, was, I was banking on you somehow not knowing that. Did you just know that? Did you know that? What it, bro, and Coulter Wall is fresh <laughs> on my mind because he just dropped two songs. Okay, that's fair. What other okay, artist so... from Saskatchewan's dad is? <laughs> I didn't know that his dad was a politician. Oh, I just I didn't that. know that. I, knew I figured of Saskatchewan. it makes sense that I guess in hindsight, it makes sense that you would know and it Canadian. since you're from Canada, can- Canada, from Canada. Canadian, <laughs> but like <laughs> I knew that he was from Saskatchewan, but there's other Canadian artists. So my reasoning was like, I don't know. I didn't because like, the just, fact that his dad whole... is a premier. I didn't. It was it. this whole thing of that's how some people found Coulter Wall was because his dad was like the premiere and then all of a sudden it's like hey the premiere's son is making music what's his name again um i think it's just like bill or something yeah it's something really basic coulter wall dad brad wall yeah well and he was the premiere till 2018 yeah 
Yeah. Uh, I guess maybe that should have been I the last clue. Yeah, <laughs> that's my bad. I. What were, what were the other two? To be fair, two? I was kind of I rush I was rushing myself while I made this. Uh, the other two clues you probably wouldn't have gotten it off of this, so I probably should have made that the last clue. Um, the second clue was that. Uh, his artist gained, sorry, his music gained more attention in late 2015 when professional wrestler Brock Lesnar mentioned him, mentioned him as his favorite artist during an interview with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Do you know who those people are? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like WWE I stuff. Thought, I thought, am I tripping? I thought The Rock was the one who showed it up. The Rock has also said that he likes him, but the person who's really into him is actually an actor named... Uh, Crap, I know his name. Don't, Darren, you're a freaking dummy. It's uh, the guy who plays Aquaman. Whenever I, I know people's oh, names... Oh, okay, I can but whenever, see him. I've seen the video. I've seen whenever, the I, whenever I actually have to like think of someone, I just... Jason Momoa, that's his name. Jason Momoa is really big into Coulter Wall, too. And he's like actually like... There's like a video... He has like videos of like him meeting Coulter Wall backstage and like hanging out with the band and stuff like that. And so... <clears throat> There's really cool stuff like that that's happened. Um, and then the third clue was that three songs from Coulter Wall's discography are featured in the fourth season of Yellowstone. Mm, that would have been a good... I probably would have, could have got it on that. Yeah. So that could I have been a second clue. Got it on the first clue. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I tried. Oh, I got it. Well, the I, thing I is, I, anyways, the thing is, I I was I, looking. There's like almost nothing. There's like nothing about Coulter Wall, and so oh, I was like, very, so to me, the lot, reason uh, uh, the reason I chose the, the premiere one is because it was interesting, and I was like, people might not know, but of course the Evan would know. Well. The Canadian would know. <laughs> the Canadian Coulter know. Coulter Wall is literally the token Canadian country singer. Yes, he is yeah. like I'd say the most relevant Canadian star. Right? No. Um, yeah. He has been for a while, I think. Yeah, for a minute. Tennille's up there. The, can I say a really <gasps> weird story about Coulter Wall? Sure. I was, so a few years ago, this is, we're talking June 2020. Like, just just as we were, like, just as Doug Ford was letting us out of our homes. Not to do anything, but he's like, you're not going to, like, you know, commit genocide by stepping outside. Um, I was just hanging out with my friends at the park. Um, and I was biking home. It's like quarter to one in the morning. And this other guy is like biking across the road from me, but we're like going at the same pace and we're on the same road for like an awkward amount of time. <laughs> I'm kind of just glancing at each other at like quarter to one. <laughs> and eventually he says something. I pull my earbud out. He's like, Hey, what are you listening to? And I was like, Oh, Coulter Wall. He's like, no way. I love Coulter. So we, we stopped and talked about Coulter Wall and country music for like 20 minutes and then I went home. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's the actually the weirdest interaction. That's actually kind of cool. So, so like you guys so were funny. both, like he was on the left side of the road and you were on the right and like you're both just going the same direction? Same direction for like several minutes. <laughs> I would have, like one... look, look chief, if that was me, the moment somebody's right next to me, I'm turning left. I'm going somewhere else. I'm like, I, <laughs> I'm like... trying to go home. Well, the thing is there's one road that goes, there's... I would have, you know what I would have done? I would have just done a loop. <laughs> <laughs> I would have, I would have just gone around the block. Yeah. So where I am, there's like one. I know you've said like all American towns have like a main road. I wouldn't say. Yeah. It's not like it's a main road, but there's one road where I live that just runs along, like directly along the lake, and uh, so we we're just biking down that, and that's like kind of can get you anywhere. So we both started at like one end of this road because it's not a long road. But we both sure. started at the one end, and we biked. We both were going pretty much to the other end of the road because it starts and ends really soon. And that whole stretch, like even through a construction zone, we're kind of just like beside each other. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, and then we talked about Coulter on country music, so that was funny. I, that yeah. reminds me, I've been wanting to get a new bike. Once I get more <laughs> money, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna. I want to get like a nice bike. You know. Do you yeah. want to hear a quick biking story actually from around that time too? Sure. So story time. Evan's injuries. Um, I, my bike, we were having issues with my tire. And because everyone started biking during quarantine, there was no tires anywhere. There was like a tire shortage for bikes. So I couldn't get a new tire for my bike. <laughs> the great Canadian tire shortage. <laughs> I couldn't get one, right? Uh, and so 
heck, even Canadian Tire didn't have any. I'm like, bro, it's your name. But, um, so anyways, my dad was like, okay, hey, just use my old road bike for the summer. Because my dad's into biking, so he has several bikes, whatever. My pop is into it. Every... So he's like, take this old road bike that I don't use anymore. And it's one of the, like, narrow tire, like, the handlebars are all yeah. weird, right? They got a, it, it took a, yeah, it took a while to get used to, but then it was just like, that was my bike for the summer. If anything, I kind of miss it. It's nostalgic now. But um, Do you don't use it anymore? No, nah, because I got a new tire for my other bike. <laughs> uh, um, whack. So I uh, was with my friends, and we were like, right, let's go to Tim's, as we do. <laughs> um, I was explaining to Jaren how right then. stereotypes. Sorry, I what? made you British for some reason. I said, right then, let's go to Tim's. <laughs> right then, lads, let's go to Tim's. We do say lads. But, lads? Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> we, do, we do say lads, <laughs> completely unironically. Uh, anyways, I say homies. This Grab is the homies. so lame. So, <laughs> hey, yeah. like, for some reason, our Tim's decided to switch from 24 hours to closing at 10 p.m. during the pandemic, right? Which made sense during the pandemic. But they haven't switched it back since, right? The, the local Tim's oh, wow. went downhill tragically. I hate oh, it. wow. Anyways, so we had to race it. We were like, let's go to Tim's before it closes. So we raced to Tim's. We did this like every night. I want to talk about. 10 minutes to close and get a drink. Sorry. I'm... And... <laughs> that just... I, I was thinking of food and... It had, and... Been, it had <laughs> been raining. And I have one buddy who's like a very like safe biker. And as he should be, he's incredibly uncoordinated. Like he wears his helmet, he bikes on the right side, he motions which way he's turning to all the cars. He's an angel biker, right? Not me. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> You're a menace. <laughs> I'm a menace on the streets with the bike. And but it's also like, you know, in the midst of a pandemic, ten PM at night in my dinky little lakeside town, there's no cars going around. Like all these country artists say, like, from a one light town. There's legitimately one stoplight in all of where I am because it's so... T and the Tim's is at the one stoplight. And so, anyways, I'm just, like, having fun, swerving all over the place because I can. And my buddy's like, I hope you wipe out. And he... Because I always bike, like, stupid. And he's like, one of these days you're going to wipe out. Well, we go to turn into the Tim's parking lot. And the skinny tires of the road bike and the damp concrete of the rain did not combine well. So I completely, like, spun out, right? And, and my friend starts laughing and he's like, I told you it's going to happen. It's like, whatever. So I go in, I get my Tim's. I, I actually didn't get anything. I was getting my friend Tim's paid for, it, came back out. And I realized two things. One, I'm leaking blood quite badly out of my ankle. Um, <laughs> my shoe is, my shoe is, my sock is red. My shoe is turning red, both white, which is an L. I was like, oh shoot. Like there's also like a, a trail of blood in the Tim Hortons that I've left behind. Oh my God. My, my DNA is there. You didn't even know. know like you didn't notice? I don't know why. I don't. So I don't know why no one told me. I also don't know why I didn't notice. Um, hmm. I don't know if I was just kind of like slightly embarrassed to just get up and keep going. Uh, but I also another thing happened. My wrist completely locked up. I couldn't feel my hand anymore. My wrist, which is one <laughs> thing. Like when I fell, I hurt it. I was like, oh dang, that kind of hurt. But then when I got out of the Tim's, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't move my <laughs> hand. I can't feel my fingers. My wrist is from. Like, have I broken my wrist? And it's starting to swell up. I'm like, oh, no. So anyways, uh, <laughs> I now have to bike home. And I have two options. I have about an 800-meter bike down a trail to my house. Or I have, like, a two-and-a-half-kilometer bike down the roads through a construction zone to my house. I had to do the construction zone because the trail is so dark at night. Not only am I sketched out of it, but I wouldn't be able to see. Yeah. So... I had to go home, and so there I am. I now have my shoe in one hand because I want to get more blood on it. And I'm, like, <laughs> holding it with my, like, locked-up wrist just against my chest. I'm now biking home on this road bike with my phone in the other hand, calling, like, a friend. I'm like, hey, did I break my wrist? Because, like, you like doctor stuff. They're like, I don't know. It's like, I called my mom. I'm like, hey, I think I broke my wrist. She's like, where are you? I'm, like, currently biking through a construction zone with no hands on my handlebars trying to get home. I... Got, I went through all the construction stuff with no hands, bleeding and everything, right? I nearly made it all the way home perfectly. But as I was turning onto one of the streets, I almost hit the curb. And I was like, you idiot, you almost hit the curb. Well, as I'm thinking this, I didn't realize that I biked across the road. And then I did hit the other curb, was <laughs> propelled off my bike, landed in some person's yard. And I couldn't... I. I lost my momentum at that point. I couldn't get back on my bike. So I had to call my mom. I'm like, hey, I'm like, 
just 200 <laughs> meters from home just down the road but can you can you pick me up like i cannot get on my bike um and then she came home and i, I you know i'd slice myself up pretty bad but that's my biking story that's that's was, actually I pretty was, funny I was so proud of myself though. Like, if you ever come to where I am, right, which I'm sure you will at some point, I will show you. It was an, it, it is an impressive thing how far I got, and the fact it was like through a fenced off construction zone at the time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's my. Bike I w- imagine in you just like I'm just imagining you launching off of the bike, already injured. Well, I had, well, I had, so I, I had to bail, right? I had to just like jump off my bike. <laughs> Just hop, just hop yeah. off to the side. <laughs> yeah, I had to just bail off of it. That's funny. But, I miss. Ri- I used to ride my bike. I used to have a bike a long time ago, but I was a lot younger, so the bike's too small for me now. So I, I don't really have a bike, and I think we do have a full mode of transport. We do have a full size bike. Well, the thing is, where I live, I don't like live like I'm in a neighborhood, so I can bike around my neighborhood. But it's like. I'm not like in town, so it's like I don't have anywhere to go. You know? See, that's the thing for uh, for where I am. There's not really anything where I am other than a single plaza, but everything everywhere you would go, you can just bike to. Like, there's one restaurant, there's a single plaza, like a grocery store and a Tim Hortons, and there's two parks. And other than that, it's just houses. So it's like anything you need in there, you just bike to. Yeah. So when you go places, do you like chain up your bike or like? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I lock up my bike. Okay. Because are Cause I don't even have, like, a bike lock or anything like that. See, yeah, no, there's definitely, like, some thievery where I mm. am, so, mm. Mm. yeah. Well, there definitely would be, the th- see, if I did do that, well, the thing is, where I live, I could probably, I would be fine. If I lived deeper in Anderson, then it would be a... Then, that's the thing, right? I, then it's I like I gotta, I gotta get the yard, but like if I go to the plaza, I gotta pack gonna the blicky, you know. I gotta get the blicky. I gotta get the, <laughs> I gotta get the, gotta get the lock. Gotta, gotta wear the, gotta wear the hat like this, you know. No, no, no it's just okay. No. I just break the handle off a of maple syrup jar, and that's my shame. <laughs> you bust the, but bust the syrup. The come syrup at bottle. me then. <laughs> oi, oi, come at me then. <laughs> like a proper road man. <laughs> Oh, well, I gotta have you. Well I gotta have you watch uh, the gentleman. I think you'll really like that movie. It's, it's uh, South Pond next, right? Yeah, we'll watch South yeah. Pond next. Yeah. I'm gonna try to watch it soon. All right, <clears throat> it's the end of the episode. Um, subscribe to both of our channels and this one. If for some reason you're listening to this and you're not subscribed, uh, like really all of our stuff. Things are happening. Cool stuff will be happening soon that I need to talk to Evan about. He, um, Do I we're gonna know have some. This? We're going to have some. Mul- we're gonna have multiple guests on the podcast. Um, okay. And we're, <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be cool. All right. See you guys.